today we're going to summarize some of the worst knife advice or opinions I have heard voiced through the channel. Now I get tons of YouTube comments and albeit I really am not probably not the best at responding to comments, not as good as I should be, but I do try my best with my crazy life in general. But anyways, I do read almost every comment that comes through and these have to be some of the worst advice, opinions, things that I have heard voiced on the channel so far. And with number one taking the cake in the center here is that there should be knife laws and restrictions in place. Now this one was also a comment that detailed that essentially the comment went something along the lines that there should be knife restrictions because if there were no knife restrictions, people would just walk around with machetes in their pants. And unfortunately, newsflash, people already do, especially over in the great country of the UK. Um, knife laws are very heavy there, or they have many, and it's very easy to get in trouble with knives in that country. And there are still so many knife related stabbings and violence in general. So once again, the laws really do nothing to actually stop criminals from using tools such as knives to commit, uh, commit different violent um, acts, whether that be robbery, stabbings, murders, homicide, whatever, you know, people are already going to use knives to do whatever they want. So a, a knife law or a restriction is really bogus because what it does is it gives someone the false sense of security. It gives you, like as a civilian, the false sense of security that it's going to stop someone. And all it does is really just enable bad people to continue to do bad things with whatever they please. Once again, a law is not going to stop anyone from using a car, a knife, a gun in whatever manner they choose. So that is the first and probably worst piece of advice or probably ultimately like an opinion um, that I've heard so far. The next one up that I get a lot of comments on, especially because I have a video hating on Gerber, is that Gerber is a good knife company. And I don't know what you guys mean. I mean, like this, in my opinion, kind of speaks for itself. Like a lot of people sit here and they're like, oh, Gerbers are great knives. Like, I don't know what to say here. I mean, this thing kind of speaks for itself. Um, a lot of people said I didn't really use it hard enough. It's pretty dull overall. Um, the serrations aren't too bad, but the blade itself is pretty bad. And as you guys can see, this handle is literally starting to peel away. It is very much broken. You can see the, the slab of steel underneath this, um, you know, plastic reinforced and like rubber over molded handle. So I don't know. I've personally not had a lot of very good experiences with Gerber knives and maybe I just got a fluke. Maybe mine's bad. This is a made in USA Gerber II nonetheless. So a lot of people are like, oh, it's just the Chinese products. This is a US made um, Gerber. So I don't know. Maybe I just got a bad product. But for me personally, a lot of the Gerbers that I've owned even if they have good build quality, have just had really poorly thought out designs and just overall knives that were not um, as competitive as they should have been for their price. So I think a really good one that I had was the Gerber Proper. And the Proper was one of those that just was very poorly thought out. And once again, I ended up selling pretty much all of my Gerbers outside of this one because I wouldn't sell something that's basically broken. Um, you know, so I've just not really had a lot of good experience, even with the knives that are durable, like the proper and the strong arm were durable enough blades, but they were just very, very poorly thought out and the execution was not there, at least in my opinion. So anyways, that is that knife. And Gerber as a whole, I think it just is very much that, you know, things like the Gerber dime, things like the um, different folders that they have. Next one up is that MagnaCut is the best steel out there. And this one is one that I actually am probably not that far away from believing. I am genuinely excited about the performance of MagnaCut as a steel. I think it offers a lot of good value and things that I am excited about when it comes to MagnaCut is I am excited that companies like Leatherman are putting things like MagnaCut on their multi-tools. I think that's an incredible 
whole step forward, taking something like a premium steel and putting it on a, you know, multi-tool or Spyderco putting Magnica on some of their salt series blades. Um, I think that those are really promising um, steps forward. However, do I think Magnacut is the best steel out there? Not by a long shot. And I think that it really comes back to that steels are, there's different steels for different applications. Like Magnica is a very good steel and it's probably the closest steel to being a true jack of all trades, but it also is a master of none. And so what I mean by this is there are steels that are more corrosion resistant than this. There are steels that are more tough than this. There are steels that have better edge retention than this. And so I think a lot of people are hyping up Magnica to be the perfect steel. And I think the more truthful designation is that it is probably the best jack of all trades master of none and so it has a really good blend of corrosion resistance toughness edge retention durability it's really a well-rounded steel and i think that that is what a lot of people like about it but i don't think that makes it the best steel unfortunately i think it is actually like i said master of none so it's actually not really like the best steel at any one thing it's just really good at everything so it's a really cool steel and i'm very happy that magna cut exists obviously you're looking at a knife that has magna cut on it i have several blades that have magna cut because of course you know you have to test the hype you have to see if the hype is real so i definitely have invested in it but once again i don't think it's necessarily the bee's knees and there are plenty of other really good steels out there and if a blade doesn't come in magna cut it's still probably just fine all right, next two up are kind of the polar opposites of each other, and that is that cheap knives are the best. I get this actually a lot in the forums and occasionally on the channel that people are just generally or even genuinely baffled that someone would spend more than 100, 200, 300, you name it, on a knife. And the reality is that a lot of these people end up coming back and saying, well, cheap knives are just the best, you know? And don't get me wrong, I like a good cheap knife. You know, I have a severe here I have an Emerson Kershaw collaboration here is yet again another um, Civivi and I will say that in the day and age that we live in now um, night like cheap knives are probably the best they've ever been so like this is like a 30 to 40 dollar knife you know these two are about 50 uh, to 40 dollar knives and honestly for what you're getting like you know caged ball bearings very very smooth blade 14 c 28 n steel which is really decent for this price point um, d2 tool steel on this guy in particular and you know like g10 handles i should say on both of these guys full aluminum hail scales on this guy like you know there's a lot of really good pretty premium features on these knives that being said there is a lot of room for improvement and cheap knives regardless to how premium they may feel or seem will obviously show their cheapness in some way like they have to cut corners somewhere and so oftentimes where that um corner cutting will be if it's not in materials it will be in quality control and something like i really do love this civivi cubit or quibit whatever you want to call it but you can see that you know like with this one it's very easy to get it to not lock up and so oftentimes I just end up spidey flicking it because it doesn't necessarily always love to lock up. So there's things like that, or there's things like Teflon washers on this guy um, and stainless steel lock, you know, like lock side uh, on that guy. So their you know, cheapness will show in cheap knives. And if you really become an enthusiast of knives, I think it does make sense to step up into more quality knives, um, you know, because these just just bring for that extra price more than anything like materials are fairly cheap in the grand scheme of things but it's the manufacturing quality control and overall design that ends up making you know an $800 knife versus you know a 40 or $30 knife because within reason especially nowadays with our highly um, you know kind of globalized world materials are really not at least 
broadly speaking. There are obviously some rare earth materials, but you know, broadly speaking, most materials like steel, um, plastics, you know, stuff like that are not that hard to source and not that hard to get. So things like G10 are much cheaper now to get than they were, you know, 10, 20 years ago. So it's not necessarily the materials that make the knife expensive. It's the machining, the process and the design and the overall like quality, like quality control of the blade. So now the next kind of flip side to cheap knives are not the best. Expensive knives are not the best. And this one, what I mean by this is when you go to the highest end possible, and granted this is not the most expensive knife in the world, but it's fairly expensive. It certainly is about like an $800 knife. Of course you're using on this one has Chad Nichols Damascus, titanium handles that have been anodized and of course have a lot of mill work on them and artwork. And so it's a very beautiful knife. It's a reasonably decent sized knife uh, to give it some comparison. Here is the cubit back. And so you guys can see there is um, Spartan Harzi folder by Spartan Knives is a good bit bigger than the uh, cubit. But like I said, expensive knives are not the best either. And this really goes back to diminishing returns. And so this is where, honestly, I think if you're really trying to get the best knife, like if you want the best knife, uh, financially speaking, go into things like the mid, I would say from about 500 to about 250 is probably where the best knives that are going to exist will exist. They bring the best quality to bear with the best materials out there, like with really good quality control. So things like the TRM Shadow are here, things like the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 are here, things like the Chris Reeve Knives, Omnum Zon, all of these knives within reason are in that price range. And ultimately, I think for good reason. Like I said, these are probably going to be where the actual or factual best knives are. This type of knife is, you know, more expensive because it's more of a piece of art. And once again, don't be wrong, more expensive knives are not going to be bad knives. It's just there's that level of diminishing returns that gets exponentially higher as you get more expensive. Like what makes a thousand dollar knife good is or better than, you know, a $500 knife is very, very small as opposed to what makes a $500 knife better than a $50 knife. Like that first $500 jump or $450 jump is, you know, like better materials, better fit and finish, better quality control. But then when you jump from 500 to a thousand, that next $500 jump gets you, you know, maybe slightly better, you know, quality control, fit and finish, maybe slightly better materials but the jump really as far as you know actual value goes like what it's end user value is far smaller and far less noticeable than um, that first initial jump so if that makes sense that's kind of um my opinion. And so I see a lot of people on both sides of the spectrum where they immediately, you know, people will say, oh, you know, cheap knives suck. And, you know, they'll show off some really expensive knife and then they'll be like, oh, you know, expensive knives suck and they'll show off some cheap knife. But honestly, I think like the best knives are really somewhere in that middle ground, not the expensive, not like the, you know, rock steads and not quite the absolute like terrible cheap knives. So anyways, guys, that is my opinion or kind of my feedback on some of the opinions and advice I've heard through my comments and general feedback in the knife community. As always, guys, God bless and I'm out.